morning, Aggieland. Welcome to Birth Control TV. I'm here with my co-host, Gabby George, and today we're talking about birth control usage among women at A&M. Yes, Hannah, birth control is such an interesting topic. There are so many options now and so many different opinions. Today, we're diving into the numbers and thoughts regarding birth control. We've gathered some great statistics about birth control usage among female Aggies. Yes, we have. We interviewed one of our own Aggies, Dr. Malia McCann, to get an update on how our fellow female Aggies were doing with their birth control and the types that they are most comfortable using. Hello, Dr. McCann. We're so glad to have you here today. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you for having me. How are y'all? We're doing great. So tell us about our fellow female Aggies and their reasons for using birth control. Well, of course, we all know birth control is a touchy subject for many families, but it is a great resource for everyone to use. I have noticed that there's a stigma around birth control, about women using birth control, due to people assuming that she is automatically having sex, but that is not always the case. It is a touchy subject for many families. With helping others understand that sex is not the only reason for using birth control, what are some other reasons? Well, many of our fellow female Aggies use birth control due to controlling their acne, alleviating their menstrual cycle pains, and also to help with hormonal reasons. Yes, around 25% of female Aggies use birth control just for pregnancy prevention, but also about 75% use birth control for multiple reasons, such as, of course, pregnancy prevention, but also to regulate periods, controlling acne breakouts, and reducing menstrual pain, such as cramps, migraines, and heavy bleeding. That is great how birth control can be used for so many different reasons. What are some of the types of birth control you prescribe to some of our fellow female Aggies? Well, as a doctor here in College Station, I prescribe different types of birth control, such as combination pills, progesterone-only pills, ortho-evra, a skin patch prescription, Nuva ring, a vaginal contraceptive ring, Depo-Vera, a birth control injection, and also two contraceptive implants, such as Implanon and UIDs, such as Paragard and Skyla. Then, of course, there's the over-the-counter resource at Condom, which is used greatly by many college students. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. McCann, for that information. It's so interesting. Here at Birth Control TV, we conducted our own study and found a few numbers ourselves. And adding to Dr. McCann, we have found in some of our field research that the most common method of birth control used by women at A&M is oral contraceptive pills. It is an easy packet of pills that are taken once a day, each containing a certain amount of estrogen and progesterone. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Dr. McCann. In our next segment, we will watch a clip from a field data collection. We'll be back after a short break. Hi, I'm Dr. McCann, and I'm here to talk to you about birth control pills. These are combo pills, actually. So as you can see, it is a very child-free packet. It is a blue-pinkish color, and this these are great pills to take. Um, you take one every day and you take 21 that are pink and seven that are brown. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. These directions are mainly to help you stay on track each and every day while you're taking your birth control. These are dates right here for your birth control to make sure that you just stay on track and it's Monday through Sunday and it's for a whole month. So as we open it up, so as you can see, we have our 21 pink pills and our seven brown pills. So these 21 pills each have estrogen and progesterone in them to help you throughout your regular days. And then these brown pills are usually placebo pills. They may have some type of sugar products, but mainly they're just placebo pills. And you take this last week is whenever you're gonna be on your period. So you still take them, but if you miss one, it's really okay because it's a placebo, so you're not going to get pregnant if you miss one of the brown ones. But if you do miss one of the pink ones, there is a possibility for pregnancy. These should usually be kept at room temperature, and these are just a great product to have, and they're easy to get from your doctor, um, get really anywhere. And now um, you can actually get these with the Affordable Hair Health Care Act for free from your doctor. Thank you. Have a good day. Hello, welcome to PCTV Field Study. Today we're on Anna's campus to hear from women and their thoughts on birth control. Hey, Anna, do you have a few moments to talk to us? Hi, sure. Thank you so much. We're from Birth Control TV. Can you introduce yourself and tell us some of your thoughts on birth control? So, my name is Carly and I'm a student at Pennsylvania. Um, I think birth control is a good thing for those who want to use it. 
Harley, do you currently use any birth control? Um, so I grew up in a religious household and I'm waiting to have sex until marriage. So uh, due to this, I don't feel a need for contraceptives. Oh, well, Harley, that's really interesting. So do you have any other friends who might be practicing abstinence but still use a hormonal birth control for other reasons beyond preventing pregnancy? I do actually. My best friend, um, she had really bad periods and she started struggling with acne and stuff. And so she got on uh, the pill. And so I think that if I had maybe the same problems as she did, I would maybe go on the pill as well. Do you think being in college and being not around more women to use birth control might change your life? Um, I don't think so. I still plan on remaining absent um, and waiting for sex until marriage. So therefore, I don't really think I have need for it. Okay, well, thank you for talking with us and sharing. Yeah, thank you. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, too. Bye. Hi, ma'am. We're from BCTV. Can we ask you a few questions? Yeah, sure. Hi, it's great to meet you today. First, can you tell me your name? Yeah, my name is Dee Dee. It's nice to meet you, Dee Dee. Thanks for taking time out of your day to, to answer a few of our questions. So first, do you mind telling us um, if you're on any type of birth control and why? Okay, so I actually use the Depo shot, and I use it because you only have to get it every three months versus the birth control pill where you can do it every day. And sometimes I can't remember that because I'm either in class learning or I'm working. And so actually I learned in my human sexuality class that it's like 98% effective. Wow, that's great. So according to our own research, we found that about 5% of women at A&M use the Depo shot as their primary form of birth control. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely true, and most of my friends, they either use the pills, or they use condoms, or they use both for extra protection against STIs in pregnancy. Wow, so this actually fits into our own research. We found that 35% of women at A&M use pills as their, as their primary form of contraception, and 20% use condoms. So this accounts for over half of the women at A&M. Thanks, Dee, for sharing with us. You're welcome. Hi, Dee. Bye. Bye. So we just heard two completely different perspectives about the usage of birth control. It's interesting to see this coming from a campus like A&M. This campus is historically conservative and more religious, but as A&M grows, our population has really diversified. Our data actually shows that 90% of women interviewed have a positive opinion on birth control. This is a great development in the world of birth control, but a stigma still exists. 85% of women believe that a stigma exists around the usage of birth control. The most common stigma reported is that women who are using birth control are sexually active. As a shame, women should feel more comfortable to use or not to use birth control for any reason. It's time for a change in our society when it comes to the stigmas around birth control. Whether you're a user or not, it's a great resource to have in a community. Fellow female Aggies show strength and bring change when it comes to the views around birth control. Thanks for tuning in to Birth Control TV in Aggieland. Thanks, Thanks and get